Hello everyone, I thought I would give another, have another go at a really poor review, I don't seem to be the best of it, but we'll have another go. Uh, this time it's the Amiga Seamaster 200 from the late 80s, early 90s, about 88 to 95 officially uh, launched. Um, this model wasn't a resounding success, um, possibly a couple of... Um, couple of reasons why, um, one of which is the integrated bracelet there, um, maybe the styling without the lugs wasn't as classic maybe, um, so not that popular, um, because it wasn't that popular, uh, even Amiga started calling them after the launch of the um, Pierce Brosnan Seamaster 300, they started calling this 200 the pre-bond, which was a bit of a derogatory term for it but fortunately it stuck and uh, well the golden eye uh, Pierce Brosnan bond really caught on still in production in one form or another today um, but we'll talk about this today now it's supposed to have been produced between 88 and 95 I suspect that they stopped making them in 93 when the uh, Brosnan bond came out or the Bond 300 came out um, and the last couple of years they've just included in the catalogue just to remove some of the stock uh, stock and uh, make sure the dealers could actually get rid of theirs um, these these came in two sizes, a mid size and a full size one 36mm uh, this particular one's uh, the 40mm doesn't wear that big to be honest without any lugs and it is quite a Slim watch, very slim actually, quite a nice easy wearing watch. Um, bracelet's nice and slim as well. Really nice and easy to wear. Um, you can hardly tell it's on your wrist actually. <laughs> a good watch in a lot of ways for that reason. Um, they also came in a ladies version, 30mm. Uh, which is a nice watch actually. For the ladies I would say, yeah, better. Definitely, um, definitely a good ladies watch. Uh, came with a couple of movements, it came with a choice of movements, either quartz or automatic. Uh, the quartz version started off with the calibre 1441, a high end quartz movement. This was highly accurate, a thermal compensated unit, um, accurate to something like 10 seconds a year, which is brilliant, you know, absolutely fantastic, real high end quality quartz movement. This was produced for less than a year uh, and got superseded by the cheaper non-thermal compensated unit, the 1438 calibre unit. Uh, that lasted all the way from the first year, after the first year, right up until they stopped making them. Um, the automatic uh, version came out with um, two movements again, uh, the 1111 calibre movement and the 1109 uh, movement. The 1109 was only produced near the end of its um, lifespan. Uh, I didn't know that myself. It was I got that information from another video where Matt Stevens, nice intelligent, uh, nice knowledgeable blog. Uh, check out some of his videos if you can. Um, both automatic movements were to chron chronometer specification, so quite a good high end movement. Um, came in a few different styles. This particular one, um, this particular one. Is the two-tone model um, solid gold bezel uh, obviously with an aluminium insert the the crown was um, forgive my fingernails it's not muck it's actually paint and I spray cast for a living um, oh that's my excuse anyway gold plated crown um, solid gold chip in the clasp tended to tended to go missing to be honest quite easily dislodged much the same as the um, bezel pip maybe didn't use enough uh, a proper adhesive or bonder to keep it in I'm tipping these inlaid links here uh, not gold plated they're actually gold filled which is quite a lot thicker than gold plated um, the, the bracelets tend to last quite well if it's two tone like this um, they also came with a, they came like that, two tone, they also came with um, 
standard stainless steel, which is that one. Really good editing skills, man. Uh, came with that one, all stainless steel. Very nice looking uh, watch. Um, and also, I don't know if you can see, smaller picture. Came with a two tone with champagne dial. Interesting to note, hasn't got the inlaid gold links, uh, which obviously was an option for these. It wasn't they didn't necessarily come with two tone models with the uh, gold inlaid links. Um, this one, this particular one, the early model, it's got the six lobed crown. As you can see, it's not got a load of serrations like a normal crown. Came with the Mercedes hands and also only one set, only one. Uh, let's have a look. Only one of these on the uh, bracelet. The later versions came with one on each side. The other, the, the other way to tell this is an early version. Two piece concave case back. The outer ring you take off and the inner comes out. Also, the earlier ones just said quite plainly Amiga Seamaster. The later versions of this model did actually come. Uh, with the hippocampus, the sea monster, sea monster on it. Um, now, eighty percent of the sea masters produced were quartz like this one in particular. You can always tell on the quartz on these because they say sea master professional and not chronometer on it or automatic. Um, let's have a look. Yeah, I, I'll go on to a little bit about. Uh, these now now they've reached from like this one's from 1988 it's the thermal compensated model this one so it's a very early one so from 1988 so it's 27 years old which coming up for a classic status if you are thinking about buying one of these always remember integrated bracelet so the bracelet is a big issue with these because without having to have a leather strap specially made that fits into that section there you're going to be but it has got drill lug holes which is a nice feature you could you could comfortably get a leather strap made for one of these i've no doubt uh, pay a little bit extra but get a nice one uh, really nice easy to wear there's a lot if you go on ebay or anywhere else a lot of rough and battered examples chip missing out of the um bracelet loom pit gone Generally tatty, the hands do suffer as well, seem to go. These, this is the tritrium dial because there was no looming over in the 80s or very early 90s. I think Amiga swapped over to that about 96, 97, something like that. Could be wrong, definitely could be wrong. Um, if you're looking at buying one now, they aren't dear. Try and buy the best one you can. Or if you are going to buy a tatty one, at least buy it as cheap as you possibly can so you can spend the money the bracelets will cost a lot of money to refurb always bear that in mind probably cost more than the watch uh, watch is worth if you're looking at it as an investment piece I think you're probably be waiting about 10 years before these start climbing in value but like all vintage Amigas they will climb in value especially the divers watches um, Lovely action to the bezel, nice and smooth. You know, I've got to remember this is about 27 years old, something like that. Works lovely. The loom's not brilliant, obviously being tritrium, it only has a half life of about 20 years, 10 years, half life, 20 years. It does still glow. The loom pit does actually glow reasonably well. Not the best. Uh, the loom the loom's shot now, or something like this, it has to be expected. Um, but yeah, if you, if you was wanting to buy one, get a nice one. I can't stress that more. This one's a particularly nice one. Very easy to keep in good condition. It's a brush brush finish case and bracelet. Even the gold inlaid links, although smoothed off, are a brushed finish. So quite easy to be able to clean the bracelet up, give it a good wash. Just brush it down with, say, a scotch Bright or something like that to, to renew the finish. Um... Probably miss lots out on this review, but it's only my second review. I'm going to try and get better. Maybe add some humour in if I do any more because people like that sort of thing. Just ask Archie Luxury. Um, 
but that's about it. If you want to check out a couple of the uh, videos on YouTube, uh, Matt Stevens, who I've mentioned before, really good in, really good at uh, the reviews. I uh, wish I had some of his skills. I think it's the Gentleman of Leisure or something like that. He, he does a really good um, review about these. Um, right, that's it. I'll leave it at that. If you like me, subscribe or give me a thumbs up. Leave some comments, no matter how bad they are. But please, no Archie Luxury type comments. Thank you very much. Bye bye.